Hey you guys, how are you doing today? I got another Project Jeweler here for you in C. This is number 10, the summation of primes. Ooh. The sum of the primes below 10 is 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is 17. Find the sum of all the primes below 2 million. Now this one is, is pretty easy to figure out if you just do, you know, take it at base value. Um, I'll spawn notepad. I already have a thing here for you, but this is not going to be the one I'm typing today. Um, I'll show you that in a second. This one I just wanted to show you. It's basically how you do problem number seven. It's pretty much the exact same thing, except you're just, you're adding them into a sum. Once you get a prime, you add it into a sum, but it's the exact same process as problem number seven. Um, but I just want to show you that doing it this way, while correct, it leaves a bit of performance to be desired. It'll it'll take a little bit to get to the answer, as you'll see here, because it goes through it iter iteratively, iteratively, something like that. This is sort of like a trial division, kind of a spin on that. But it takes a little while to run, as you can see, but you do get the right answer, 1429138289229. But the purpose of this video is more to show you how to do it in a, a better performing way, a better way. So I feel like Project Euler is going to give me a bunch of problems that uh, have to do with computing primes below a certain amount and we'll want to get more into algorithm work instead of just trying to calculate all of the stuff at once, right? So that's what we're going to do today for this one. We're going to use an algorithm. Specifically, it's going to be a sieve. Uh, more specifically, the sieve of Aristothenes. Or er erat Eratus Athenes, Aristothenes, something like that. Eratosthenes. I don't. I don't remember. Anyway, his he made ancient Greek dude made a great algorithm for calculating primes that is pretty. It's pretty good in performing up to around the number ten million. Finding the number of primes uh, below ten million, it's pretty good up until there. But we're gonna use that because it finds the solution very fast. Hell of a lot faster than doing it. Uh, through every iteration like we just showed. But to do and use the, the sieve of Eratosthenes, one of these days I'll pronounce it right, probably not. We're going to use a couple includes here. Standard input output header. And the math header. Because we're going to use square root in here. Aha. And then also before I do my little, my main function, my main procedure here, I'm going to define a number n, you can call it whatever, I'm going to call it n, and that's going to hold uh, basically 2 million, what we're looking for, all the primes below. So we've, we're also going to go one extra, because we're going to make uh, an array, and when using this array we're going to want to at least use the first element in there, and the indexes are zero based in C, so we're going to add one to this number. So, that might not be the, the the main reason we have to do that, but, I mean, that's why I'm doing it. Is it needed? I, I think so. So we're going to do that. For our vari variable declarations, we're going to have some long longs. The answer is more than 10 digits long. We need a long long. I'm going to use i, j, and sum. So we're going to sum up all the primes. i and j will be counters for a few, a couple loops. And or element markers in an array. Uh, which we're gonna put right here. I'm gonna do a static int array, integer array. I'm gonna call it primes. It'll be an array of, of our prime numbers. It'll be the size n. Now the reason I had to use static was because when I tried doing this earlier, um, it would not it would not compile, or it would compile and not show anything when it ran because I was I was not dedicating enough memory to my array, which is gonna be you know two million two million one numbers large. Um, my program at compile time or at runtime cannot allocate enough memory to make this array, so it just it just didn't run, it just pooped out. But I found that putting static here is one way to dedicate enough memory to this uh, when you compile it, or at least the binary knows what to do with it, so that uh, the program works. So that's why I'm doing that. I think you could also do like a special define for your array up here, but uh, I'm choosing to do it here. Now if I also, if I declared in within the program, it was also giving me kind of buggy issues or something that I didn't care to deal with for a long time, so that's why I defined n up here as well. But this combination, defining n and then doing a static integer array of size n within the uh, the main function has has let me run the run the program without issue, so that's why I'm doing that. 
sort of long-winded explanation there. Um, I'm gonna initialize our variables to zero. I'll put them each on one line, because I know you're tired of me doing it all on one line, right? I'll put each of them on their own line. We'll have our first loop here, and the purpose of this loop is basically going to be to go through our prime's integer array. We're gonna go through the whole integer array. We're gonna set everything basically equal to a prime status. We're gonna say they're all primes to start out with, because this is how you start the the sieve of the sieve of Eratosthenes, which I'm never gonna pronounce right. But we're gonna go through all the arrays. So loop through i equals zero, i less than or equal to n, and then increment. And we're gonna take the ith element in our primes array. We're gonna set it to one. Now you could probably also make this an array of bools, of booleans, and set them all to true, false, what have you. True, most likely. But we're just, it, it works the same pretty much. If you just make them integers and set them all to one, it works the same for our, our program logic. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set every two million and one, all of those elements, we're gonna set to one. Um, basically meaning that they're all prime starting off. And then basically we're gonna go through and set off all of the elements that are not prime. We're gonna set them to zero or false, logically. So that way when we sum up all the primes at the end, it'll just skip over those. And that, that'll increase performance a lot. It won't have to deal with every single number every single time. So in our second for loop, after we've set them all to true, set them all to prime status, their primalities on however you say it, we're gonna loop through starting with i equal to two, i less than the square root of n, because to find if a number is prime or not, you do not need to compute past the square root of the number. Uh, it has to do with the basic, how factors factor into a number. Factors come in pairs, and one is like, one of the factors is less than or equal to the square root of a number, and the other factor for a number is greater than or square, greater than or equal to the square root. But basically, you don't have to compute past the square root of a number to find the prime. And it's, it's great because it cuts down on computation time and, and thinking and everything. But inside of our loop, while we're going up to the square root of the number, starting from two because zero and one are not primes, so we're just not gonna, we're gonna ignore them. We don't have to deal with them. So we can start at two. But in there, we're gonna check if the element that we're currently on inside the primes array. At this point, it'll be two. It'll be the third element, so primes two at this point, taking the place of i. We're gonna see if it is one, if this is a prime number. By default, it is, so this will be true. The first run through, which makes sense because we're counting two as a prime number. So once we get to there, we're assuming it's true, we're assuming it's a prime. Then we're gonna set off all the multiples of that prime. We're going to make not prime. And this is true if you think about it, if you go through, you have two, two is a prime number, but the multiples of two you can get, uh, for this case under two million and one, you'll get, you know, four, six, eight, twelve, ten, you know, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, two, just keep adding two, all of those multiples, they are not prime, because they are divisible by two. Only two is prime. So if you find, basically, if you find a prime number, then you know that all the multiples of that number above it are, they are not prime. That's just... That's how it works. It's pretty great. It's nifty. So we can use that and we can say, you know, if we find an element and it's prime, then we want to make sure that all of the multiples in that element are of that element are not prime. So how do we do that? We're going to set a counter j equal to i, and we're going to do i times j less than or equal to our number n and increment j uh, inside of a for loop. And we're going to set off the element of i times j. I'm gonna set it equal to zero. And what this will do, see, if you go through here on the first runtime, we'll have two, right? So we'll get primes two. We're basically checking if the number two is prime or not. And we, it is prime right now. So then we're setting for j equal to i, or j equal to two at this point, i times j. So this will be two times two is four. Four is less than our number. We're gonna set it off. Four is not a prime number, which is true. And then we're gonna set j plus plus, so j will equal three. And it'll be two as i, so two times three, which is six. Six is not prime, we're setting it off. And then so on, so forth, j will be four. Four times two is eight, eight is not prime. Five, five times two is 10, 10 is not prime. So on, so forth for all the multiples of two up until our number n. And this will make them all not counted as prime. And after we get through that, we'll go and increment i, i will be three. 
We'll set J equal to three. You could set J equal to two every time, but it is not as performant as setting J equal to I for the sole fact that you don't need to go through all the multiples of two at that point. They're already done. Then after you go through all the multiples of three, all the multiples of three are already set off. There's no reason to increment or iterate through them again. So you can just set J equal to I here. It'll improve performance a bit even further. But you know, after we go through all the multiples of two, we'll say I will be equal to three. So J will be equal to three. Three times three is nine. Nine is not a prime number. It's divisible by three. We'll set it off. J will be four. Four times three is 12, so on and so forth. And we're good. It'll get rid of all the multiples of three up until our number n. It'll set them as not prime and so on and so forth for every prime up until the square root of n. It's basically how these these uh, this nested loop works and it's, it's pretty great. But after we've gone through and set off all the numbers that aren't prime, we're only left with the prime numbers in our array. So at this point, we will loop, loop through our array again setting i equal to 2 because we don't care about 0 and 1, they are not prime numbers. i less than or equal to our number n, increment i, but basically we're going to go through back, back through the array, we're going to see which ones are left as prime numbers. So we'll have a check if the ith element in the primes array is 1, so if it is still a prime number, then we need to add it to our sum because we need to find the sum of all the primes below 2 million and all of those are in our array so we can just add them through here sum plus equal to i the ith element which will be the number so it'll add up 2 3 5 7 11 13 it'll add up everything up to 2 million and 1 into our sum variable so then we'll have the answer and what's left to do but print it these are long long so we're going to do ld long long digits and a new line just because and we'll print our sum so we can see what the answer is so this should run a heck of a lot faster than the previous one as i show the powershell which i did not do before let me show you again one second runtime because i did not pop that up sorry about that hopefully you enjoyed i'll see you next time